Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Wizfish, and welcome back to Overwatch. Today, we're going to be talking about Moira. A bit of a disclaimer before we start, this video is by no means a comprehensive guide. It's literally just me talking about three major points that I want to discuss after playing Moira for about 20 hours or so. Some of it's about clearing up community misconceptions, and some of it's about how to maximize her potential, her value, specifically in regard to her orbs and her ultimate. So, without further ado, let's just get into it. So the community seems to be in a state of discord about Moira's viability, her value, what she brings or doesn't bring to a team comp. Some say she's OPAF and others think she's underwhelming. My personal opinion on the matter is that Moira in her current form is probably the most polished and balanced new hero launch that we've ever had in Overwatch. In the right hands, she's a straight up nightmare to play against. I actually think that Moira's skill ceiling is pretty high. While her mechanics are pretty straightforward, learning all of her little nuances and really mastering her kit can bring a lot of value to a team. So the first thing I'll touch on is more for the people that have a Moira on their team and not necessarily for Moira players themselves. I don't know how many times I've seen people bitching and moaning about Moira players that are doing damage. I see it a lot and I don't know if it's just a lack of understanding on their part or if they just haven't played her enough and they're not familiar with exactly how it feels when you're playing her, but I've seen tons of people in game on Reddit complaining that their Moiras are just playing her like a DPS. So this quote unquote tip is more of a PSA for those people. Moira has to deal damage. Her healing orb is far from reliable and it's on a long cooldown and her primary fire, which is her heal, can pump out a lot of healing on multiple targets at once. If you hold down left click on Moira, you get around 9 seconds straight of awesome healing. But after those 9 seconds, if you just don't do anything, it takes about 45 seconds to recharge that heal meter. It regens painfully slow, and the only way to regen it faster is to use your secondary fire on the enemy team. Moira's primary heal goes empty very fast, especially if the team is taking heavy damage. That's a big part of why you see your Moira doing damage, chasing kills, etc. It's not just because they're playing her all wrong, it's probably because the team's poor positioning resulted in the team taking way too much damage and she already used all her heal juice on you to keep you alive. You might say, okay fine, I get that part, but why is she always using her damage orb instead of healing? Why is she chasing kills? Why is she beaming Farah in the sky while we're all taking damage on the ground? Okay, so we'll get to the orb thing soon, but I can tell you why she's chasing kills and attacking Farah. She's good at it, simple as that, Moira's beam range makes are one of the most reliable ways to deal with a Farah. So especially if your team is already struggling to take her out, Moira doing her part to help isn't really a bad thing. And as far as chasing kills, yeah, she's good at that too. She excels at chasing low health targets and confirming the kill. It's one of the reasons her fate ability is so much fun to use. It's on a short cooldown, and as long as she's not seriously overextending, you should be rooting her on instead of flaming her. Alright, on to the next thing here. Lots of people say that Moira's ultimate is kinda shit, and I honestly don't agree with it. I think the problem stems from what most people consider ultimates to be. Typically, they're game changers. Typically, they win fights, end fights, turn the tide, that kind of thing. For a lot of heroes in Overwatch, you use your ult to counter another ult, or to attempt to wipe the team. Moira's ult shouldn't really be used like that. It's not gonna save your team from the same kind of things as, like, a transcendence will. It shouldn't be used to counter Genji Blaze or Hanzo ults. Her ult is strongest during the mid fight, where both teams are just trying to frag out. It's good for finishing off low health targets, it's perfect for destroying Orisa's ultimate or a Torb turret behind a barrier, but its usefulness is also reliant on your own team's game sense. When they hear you pop your ult, they should help you maximize its value. If you're ulting and healing 4 teammates in front of you while damaging 5 enemies in front of you, you're using it right. But that's not going to stop the McCree on your team who died to a Genji on a mad flank 40 feet behind you from bitching at you about how you're playing a healer and you should be healing. Like, dude, shut up. Okay, and probably for the biggest thing, I think it's the, uh, the orbs. I think this will be a pretty unpopular opinion, but hey, it's my video, I say what I want. More often than not, your damage orb will net more value than your healing orb. I said it. Right, let me try to explain why. When I first saw the orbs, I thought they were awesome. There was something super appealing about seeing my Genji 1v1ing in a room just out of my reach, and just being able to toss him a healing orb to give him that extra edge he needs to win that fight. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, you totally should, but there are a few things to consider. Okay, so the orb travels fast, right? And then when it tethers to a target, it slows way down. We know this. But what I've found is that when I want to throw out that clutch healing orb to Genji, if I'm not at full health, the orb will immediately leave my hands and just be slow because it's healing me straight away. And then I'm at full health and Genji is dead. Rip. 
So now I've made a point to only throw flankers my healing orb when I'm at full health, so that way I'm getting the most value. Now the healing orbs are great if you're stuck in a 1v1 and you need some extra heals to sustain yourself. The advantage of using your orb for self-healing is that you're the one shooting it and you can predict where it's going to bounce a lot better than your teammates are going to be able to, so it's good for that. Now if your team is stacked up and your heal meter is full and you need tons of burst healing, absolutely use the healing orb and then spray everyone with the primary heal. But outside of those instances, I'm almost always using the damage orb over the healing orb and I'll tell you why, and it's just value. With the damage orb, you get instant value every orb, every time. You aim your orb at an enemy, and you don't really care if it hits the target that you didn't intend. It'll just slow down, it'll hit someone, it's all good for you. I can't tell you how many times I've launched a healing orb at a group of teammates, and the guy that needed the heals ran just out of range, and then the orb travels at the speed of light straight through all my full health teammates and missed the guy that needed it entirely. That's a loss in value, and it's 10 seconds before you get to throw another one out. With the damage orb, you don't have this problem. You shoot it, it tethers, it's always valuable. Not to mention, in a 1v1, if you combo your damage orb with your right click, you can kill most heroes in the game in like just 2 seconds. You'll net the kill, get the charge on your heal meter, and be better equipped to turn around and spray your teammates with your really powerful heal. A lot of times this is more valuable than not getting that kill. Shooting that 300 HP orb into your team, all taking damage, it only heals each of them for like 60 HP. I'd much rather confirm the kill, get the heal charge, and support my team that way. Bottom line for me is Moira is effective. I've solo healed with her and the results weren't terrible. They weren't great, but it was a hyper aggressive style of playing and it was exciting and fun and most of all different. As for whether or not she's OP AF, I really don't think so. I just think we need time to learn the synergies and counters and what really works well. And we won't know that stuff until she's been out and competitive for a little while first. And now I'm just gonna really quickly touch on a few of the nerfs I've seen people calling for. Uh, her beam range, uh, no. Seriously, get good. That's it's the damage is pitiful. If you're dying to this too much, it's probably more of a positioning problem on your part. Uh, what's next? Her fade cooldown. I agree, six seconds is pretty short, but I think it's the defining ability in her kit. It makes her survivable, way more survivable than her life steal that she gets from a right click. In fact, if there was one thing I think that I'd be okay with them nerfing or even removing, it would be the life steal on her secondary fire. Fade is what makes Moira unique to me, and I know that if the cooldown was increased, I'd have a lot less fun playing her. And the third thing is uh, her ult charge. Yeah, okay, she gets her ult like almost every fight, but then again, her ult in and of itself isn't broken. It doesn't wipe the team and it's not a super effective holy shit button like Sen's trance is. I'd be okay with her ult charge being tweaked, but again, I'm not sure that the ult warrants a change. As Moira, you're super vulnerable while you're ulting. You can be stunned, you can be focused, you can't toss out orbs, and you can't fade away if you're in a tight spot. I honestly think she's pretty balanced, and we should really figure out how she ticks and how to play with and against her in the best way before the community's calling out for nerfs, because you know what? We definitely don't need another Doomfist situation, alright? But anyway guys, that's it for this video. I hope someone out there found it valuable. I really haven't seen anyone address the Moira misconceptions yet, and I haven't seen anyone really talk in depth about the orbs and the challenges that come with them, like the specifics like I did. But I had a lot of fun making the video for you guys. If you liked the video, drop a like, maybe subscribe. Also, feel free to check out my stream on Twitch. I'm usually on there every night at like 11 p.m. Eastern, and I'm usually playing Overwatch. So, links in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.